What's up everyone, I'm Ari, Creative Director here at Heaviosity, and in this video I'm going to go over how I used our Creative Convolution plugin, Vast, to write a track in the style of Trent Reznor or Atticus Ross, kind of a Nine Inch Nails meets How to Destroy Angels song. It was a blast to work on, it's always fun using all the analog gear around me. So let's dive right in, and then we'll pick it apart. Here we go. All right, so that's the track. I, <laughs> I had a blast working on this one. Um, I started with just the kick drum from the Moog DFM, which is an amazing sounding drum synth. Um, kind of four to the floor, straight ahead, low thump. It's got a little bit of kind of texture along with it. Let's take a listen. And then right here, coming up, fast comes in. All that good stuff on top, that high-end kind of echoey timbre shift delay that's happening. Sounds almost like a drum beat. And it's just being fed the kick drum. Um, I'm using a rhythmic preset from Vast under Creative Echoes. It's using a rhythmic convolution file. You know, we can play another one here. So you can really build these kind of intricate grooves quickly with Vast just by loading in a, a rhythmic convolution, put a little bit of delay on, and you're all set. So with this one, again, I just used the Barreling 16th preset. Kind of pulled the beat along. And to start building on top of that, I tracked my Lyra 8 to create a synth bed, and then another lead part on top of that where I was using the tuning knob to kind of rise the pitch up to get to the flat 7 leading into the part at bar 9 here. Let's take a quick listen with Vast engaged. Kind of pulsating a little bit. It's feeding this reverb, which without gets pretty anemic sounding. All right, since we're talking about the Lyra, I figured I'd show you a little bit about what this sounds like. And then 
what Vast can actually do to this thing. So bringing in the amount to about 70%, I have a preset called Pad Maker. I have this tune to see. I have the delays set to a kind of like shimmer effect, which is rising in pitch and then feeding back on itself. So just the dry. And right, we have the pulse coming from the LFO oscillating, triggering the modulation here. All right. Now, if we pull up a little bit of vast, you get that really nice kind of shimmer effect. Just a really, really cool sound. Anyway. And then at bar 8, that's when things really kind of start to kick in. Um, a lot of times with a track by Trent and Atticus, or Nine Inch Nails style track, there will be piano. They have a pretty unique piano sound. Which has this, like, salon vibe. It's kind of pitch tape warbly, pretty intimate not too clangy sound. Um, and, you know, I started with just a, a basic piano. It's just straight ahead piano. But you put Vast on it, and all of a sudden it transforms into that sound that I was looking for. feels like it's in a room, the dimension is there, it's wide, it kind of sits back, it's got that warble timbre to it, it builds really nice character, I'm um, using just a simple wood room convolution, compressing it quite a bit to get that room ambience out, um, and then I'm only using about, you know, 30, 35% wet mix, but then I'm feeding both the convolution sound and the dry sound into the delay here and the delay has feedback is up and I'm using a mod amount pretty high and that modulation which is slow modulation is what's building that kind of tape warble feel and the piano part itself is pretty simple single notes on the top as a melody It does change the pattern a little bit, where it'll anticipate notes. It pulls you along that way and keeps it a little uneasy, or a little more interesting. Underneath that part, I have some mallets playing using a spire, um, and they're kind of like a call and response right underneath the piano. And holding down the bottom beneath all of this, I made a pad using Gravity 2. And it's a really cool pad. I'll just solo that guy. It starts under the pitch 
So it's really uneasy, and then it kind of bends its way up with this like wow sound. And there it is. <laughs> so all of that together playing kind of brings us to the next part where I start bringing in more movement with the ostinato from a Eurorack synth. You can listen to that guy. Just pedaling on C. It's got Vast on it, using a rhythmic echo again. Um, one of the cool things about this part, though, is I, I assign the MIDI velocity to the voltage-controlled amplifier and the filter cutoff on the synth back there, so that as I played harder, it would get a little more saturated, it would open up a little bit more, and build this offbeat feel just by using the accents rather than changing the pattern of the note. So it was a consistent ostinato, but the attacks would change based on the velocity. So all of this kind of builds up and takes us to 25, which is where the chord progression comes in. The beat's still going, like this pedal underneath. Right here, the ostinato turns to an arp. The electric keys come in, bringing us right to 25. Right there you'll notice you know guitar chords came in they're open it's just one big chord there's a low piano chord that comes in just low c open i think what worked well here was pulling everything back right the drums kind of go away there's a little bit of an off beat with just a tss, 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 hi-hat sound um but this is the first time that we hear a progression change on the low end, right? So the actual chords are changing. Um, so pulling everything out and making it a little more open was important to let that breathe. So especially here, because it's the first time we're introducing this progression, you know, which is pretty interesting. You have C major to B flat major with a nine and a seven to E minor to E flat major. So you're getting this like walk down C, B flat, E, E flat. So you're kind of falling your way down back to the C major. And all of that builds up to kind of the big reveal at the end here at, at 33, where guitar, electric bass comes in, um, the Moog Minotaur has been kind of thumping along underneath, holding down the bottom. The Lyra pads come back in at 33, the drums come back in at 33, and I add a kind of kick snare hi-hat rhythm underneath using some Damage 2 and Damage Drum Kit stuff. guitar part that's doing a flat seven bend in octaves on the top which you hear kind of a lot in this type of song <laughs> the flat seven is something that's used a lot especially on top of a, a major third um, and the drums let's take a quick listen to just the drums there is some really great kind of drum verb that's just holding it all together giving space using the 
kind of vintage drum plate preset. And it's got, you know, the hi-hats doing this tickets, 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 tickets. It's on the off beats, just like the piano. It's pulling you along throughout this thing that has a very forward of the floor feel with the kick drum. So that builds all the way to the end. And then from there, we bring the Lyra pads back in. I crank up the drive and the mix of the drive from the synth itself, which has an awesome sound. <laughs> Um, and we can just listen out. So from 33 to the end. So that's the track. I hope you enjoyed. I had a blast working on this one. It was a ton of fun using the analog gear here. Um, and it's pretty amazing how much Vass is doing to kind of fit it all together. It's adding a ton of character, a ton of dimension, some really great space and width to the sound, um, and building these great rhythms especially for like this kind of style of music like the non-traditional echoes the non-traditional spaces the warbly tape feel just works so well with this kind of track i hope you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already click below join us on insta and facebook at heaviosity check us out heaviosity.com check out vast it's super fun heaviosity.com slash vast thanks for watching